For a manufacturing company, the process of figuring out not only what amount of cost went into the production of product during the period, but what portion of those costs you can expense as a cost of goods sold when the product is actually sold is a multi-step process. The first thing you need to do is prepare your cost of goods manufactured schedule. That will tell you the amount of cost which was contained in units which you finished producing during the period. And then when you have that number, you can transfer it over to the income statement. Use that in your calculations to figure out what amount of those inventoryable product costs can be expensed under cost of goods sold. So let's start this process for Peterson Company. The first thing we need to do is make our cost of goods manufactured, or COGM as I call it, schedule. And to do so, we are going to need a few things. And that is a list of the balances of our different inventory accounts, direct materials, WIP, and finished goods, both at the beginning of the period and the end of the period. You're going to need to know what your purchases were in terms of direct materials, you're going to need to know what your labor expense was for the period. And then you're going to need to know all of the other costs that you incurred. And we have that information here in front of us. We have Peterson Company's beginning and ending direct materials uh, inventory, WIP inventory, and finished goods inventory for the period of 2017. We have how much they purchased in direct materials, what their total expense was for direct labor and indirect labor. The amount of cost that they paid for insurance on their manufacturing plant during the 2017 fiscal year, the amount of depreciation that their plant and their equipment had during the period, the amount they had to pay for repairs and maintenance on that plant and the equipment within during the period, and how much they spent on marketing, distribution, customer service costs, and as well as general and administrative costs. Let's start this process rolling by preparing Peterson Company's cost of goods manufactured schedule. For their cost of goods manufactured schedule, we're going to start by figuring out what amount of direct materials they actually used. And for this process, you're going to do a very similar calculation over and over and over again. And we have that over here. If you take the beginning amount of the inventory type that you had and add to it the additions that you made during the period, you'll find the total amount that you had available. And once you know the total amount of that was available of that particular inventory type, in this case direct materials, you can subtract out what you had left during the period to figure out what your actual consumption was. So for Peterson Company, our information tells us at the beginning of 2017, they had $21,000 worth of direct materials already on hand in their storage when the period began. During this year, they purchased another 74000 which means if they had 21000 when they started and they bought another 74000 throughout the whole 2017 year, they had $95,000 worth of direct materials come into Peterson Company's facilities, which they could have used. But... According to our information, they didn't use every last one of those direct materials, which is common because they're ending the period with $23,000 worth of direct materials left in their storage, left to be used at some point in the future. So if they could have used $95,000, but they have $23,000 remaining, the difference between those two numbers is what they actually used, and we can figure out that Peterson Company used $72,000 worth of direct materials in production. And since that is a direct inventoryable product cost, we can put that cost into our inventory as we are constructing it. The next product cost, which we can inventory, is the cost of labor as long as those employees are necessary for the production process. Well, this is direct manufacturing labor. This is the people running our machinery in order to make the product that Peterson makes. So that is definitely an inventoryable cost. And our information tells us that this company spent $22,000 in labor costs for laborers who worked directly in the manufacturing process. Those costs are very, very traceable. There are costs that Peterson Company will incur that are much harder to trace to all of the different products this company makes that would get pooled. 
but they're still related to the manufacturing process, which means those costs are still going to be inventoryable. And we've got a big list. We've used the top guys up here. We're down to indirect manufacturing labor costs. We got a big list of costs. Which one of these can be inventory? Well, they have to be related directly to the manufacturing process. Well, indirect manufacturing labor is definitely related to the manufacturing process. Again, that's things like our production supervisors, our custodial staff, our security people. Uh, still very necessary to have the production facility keep running. So that's an inventoryable cost. We need to have insurance on our manufacturing plant. That's a necessary cost of production. That's an inventoryable cost. During the process of making all the stuff, we are wearing down our machinery. It's getting older. Our plant is getting older, etc., which means all the depreciation related with the different uh, depreciable assets which are used in production is an inventoryable cost. And fixing and maintaining those same assets, as long as they're used in production, which these are because that's their plant assets, that's an inventoryable cost. Down here at the bottom, we have marketing distribution, and customer service. Very necessary aspects for Peterson's company's business, but not directly related to the production process. Those costs are period costs. They are non-inventoriable. And by rule, general and administrative costs are the costs that you pay for the people that oversee the business as a whole. But those people do not actually physically manufacture the goods nor directly supervise the people who are manufacturing the goods so that is not an inventoryable cost which means we can't put these bottom two into our cost of goods manufactured schedule because they are period costs they are not product costs but indirect manufacturing labor plant insurance depreciation of our plant assets and repairs and maintenance on those plant assets those are all inventoryable. So I'm going to take the numbers provided in our information, the $17,000 of indirect manufacturing labor costs that Peterson Company incurred, the $7,000 of plant insurance, the $11,000 of depreciation on their plant assets, so their PP&E, and the $3,000 they spent repairing and maintaining their plant assets and add them all together. That is $38,000 worth of costs, which are directly related to the production process, which means they can be inventory, but they can't be easily traced. Those are our indirect manufacturing costs. So now we know the amount of direct materials, which was used in production, the amount of direct labor, which was used in production, and the amount of indirect costs that Peterson Company incurred during the production process. Those are our three cost components, which can be Inventory, that's our total manufacturing cost. So if we add the 72,000, the 22,000, and the 38,000 together, we find out that Peterson Company spent $132,000 manufacturing goods during the period. That was the total amount of cost which was contained in goods that they were making during 2017. Well, I imagine that they had goods that they were working on when the period began that they were in the middle of producing. So they would have costs already contained in inventory which was a work in process when the period started and our information tells us that their beginning whip was twenty six thousand so when the period started we had twenty six thousand dollars in costs already tied up in inventory which we were in the process of constructing during the period we added another hundred and thirty two thousand dollars worth of cost to inventory as we were producing it that means that had we finished every single product that came through like we had nothing we were working on when 2017 ended the total amount of inventory would have been valued at 158,000 our historical cost to produce it but we didn't finish everything and we know this because we have ending work in process inventory some of that inventory was still being worked on as 2017 ended and the amount of costs which are contained in inventory which we've not yet finished manufacturing was $25,000. we are looking for our cost of goods manufactured, past tense, meaning we are done manufacturing that stuff. Well, if we could have had $158,000 worth of cost in total go through inventory if we finished everything, but we have $25,000 tied up in stuff that we didn't finish. What portion of that $158,000 of total manufacturing costs we have to account for went into goods which we finished manufacturing? And that is 158,000 minus 25,000. That is 133 grand. So Peterson Company spent 133,000 dollars manufacturing goods, which they completed and could have possibly sold 
during the period. And now that we have that information, we can use that to figure out what amount of expense we can record for the production cost of goods which we actually sold. Uh, and that's going to be the cost of goods sold section on an income statement. Like all income statements, you start with the amount of revenue that you generated. And we're going to uh, be given in this problem that our revenues were 310000 Again, in real practice, you would have all of the billing that you did to your customers. The, that information would be on your accounting records. We're more focused now on what our cost of goods sold is, so let's just have that be provided. We've got $310,000 of sales revenue. We need to figure out what amount of cost went into products which we actually sold during the period and we can use that same process that we used for direct materials inventory over here and our whip inventory as well to figure out how we changed our finished good inventory because that's the type of product we sell we don't sell raw materials we don't sell stuff that we're half done completing we sell finished sellable products so let's figure out what amount of inventory Peterson company had at the beginning of the period which was in sellable condition but they had not sold it yet. That would be our beginning finished goods inventory and we find out that at the beginning of 2017 Peterson company had $13,000 of finished goods inventory. How much did they spend during the period making stuff that they finished manufacturing? That is our cost of goods manufactured. And the entire purpose of this cost of goods manufacturing schedule is to find this one number so we can transfer it over to our income statement. We had $13,000 worth of sellable inventory on hand when the period started. We spent another $133,000 building more inventory which we finished and could have sold during the period, which means Peterson Company had $146,000 worth of finished goods inventory and if they had sold every last product that they had that was finished during the period, that would be their cost of goods sold. But they didn't sell every last bit of finished goods inventory because we have ending finished goods inventory here. And it is given in the problem that they have $20,000 of ending finished goods inventory on hand. So if they could have sold $146,000 worth of inventory, but they still have $20,000 of it left over that they didn't sell, what amount of inventory did they actually sell? The difference between those two numbers, which is 126,000. So if they sold their stuff for $310,000 during the year, their sales revenue, they spent $126,000 producing those goods, which they eventually sold, what amount of profit did they make? The difference between those two numbers. Peterson Company's gross margin or gross profit, whatever you want to call it, for the period was $184,000.